Today we're going to be looking at another one of Kurtz Gazat's videos. Specifically, we fell for the oldest lie on the internet. Is that the Nigerian prince thing? Those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's see what this is all about. Look at this fun fact. Did you know that your blood vessels taken together at up to 100,000 kilometers, enough to wrap them around the planet twice? One of our favorite one. fun facts used in our book and app and a video and... Wait, 100,000 kilometers is like, like a lot. We've used it so often, but where do we get this number from? And how do we know it's true? Welcome to an epic research riddle that took us well over a year to figure out and led us on a strange and baffling journey. It began extremely innocently. We always collect interesting and fun facts to make our stories more colorful. And sure. this one Analogies. was just perfect. All of your blood vessels twice around the world. When you do any of these analogies, you got to have various rules to keep it grounded. Like capillaries are really small and it's difficult to accurately measure their density. It assumes a certain body size, not to mention measurement challenges if you were indeed trying to stretch this. It's kind of like the coastline paradox where you would actually draw these lines. Small thing, big number. Wow. <laughs> but one day, someone asked where this number was actually from. Mm. I mean, I like the idea of these analogies. I use them all the time when nuclear power, such as a pistachio or fingertip sized nuclear fuel pellet. This fingertip in uranium fuel has a has more energy than a ton of coal or 150 gallons of oil. And when you scale that up, a coal plant needs whole trains full of coal in order to keep it running. Whereas a nuclear power plant, and that's on the order of days, whereas a nuclear power plant, eh, new fuel receipt mainly consists of just a couple of new truckloads every 18 to 24 months. Now, a lot of that fuel is reused, but still. Did it really matter though? Because it had to be true. If you Google variations of how long are your blood vessels put together, you'll right, find no the same what, numbers right? over and over. 100,000 kilometers or 60,000 miles. You find it in books. Same is true if you ask ChatGPT or whatever your favorite AI assistant is, or whatever your favorite AI assistant there is. Dogs, web pages of educational institutions, or lecture notes, reviews, scientific papers, and articles. We ourselves have used it multiple times. So it couldn't be that hard to find the source, right? Right? The That's an interesting point, tracing stuff back to its original source or its original idea. Yeah, that can get, can get kind of hard. First perplexing thing we noticed was that not a single one of the many, many websites, books, or articles quoted the original source. Most didn't give a source at all, some linked to each other. It seemed like- I don't need a source. I did this experiment myself. <laughs> Oh, I don't want to know. Number was just accepted as a truism. Very weird. Even worse and more suspicious was that the number was used inconsistently. Some said it's the total length of capillaries. Some said it's just vein. Is it capillary? I've always said capillaries. Must be a regional thing. Plus arteries and others cited it as the length of everything put together. Hmm. Something wasn't right. We couldn't let this go. Getting a this is a weird combination of the burbs and then you have this more realistic looking background. I guess this is supposed to be the head of Kurtz Gazette. Our fact straight is critical for what we do here, and since we've used this fact ourselves a few times, this now felt personal. We needed to find the original source and solve this research riddle. I mean, I get it. I've been the victim of errors carrying forward. In my earlier videos, I mentioned a shake was 100 nanoseconds as opposed to 10 nanoseconds. And that was due to me mishearing something that one of my professors said way back when I was in college. So thank you very much for correcting me. I didn't want to carry that forward, but it's interesting how you run into traps and it's like, oh, certain things you almost don't feel the need to bother looking them up just because they've been true for that long. That's, that's fascinating. For those of you who don't know, a shake is used in the context of the speed of nuclear reactions. Just another made up unit from the Manhattan Project. There had to be an original source. 
random Googling just turned up thousands of sites that quoted the number, so many no lead to the original. Too, yeah. So we moved on to PubMed, a search engine for biomedical science papers. Zero. Okay, weird. Maybe if we tried a few different keyword combinations. <laughs> Nothing. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, finally, we found a bunch of scientific papers, but still, not a single one referenced the original source. The number also showed up in two different biology textbooks. We contacted. The thing about certain scientific papers, though, they could just reference each other and, and be like, I have to be careful with certain scientific papers, though, and I'm sure they, they know this, because sometimes they could just reference each other and say, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm peer reviewed, even though. There's a big difference between referencing and reviewing in terms of the level of scrutiny. ...to the authors, but they told us that the number has been circulating for decades and that they'd also be curious to know where it comes from. Maybe we needed to go back to the olden days. So we narrowed our olden search days. to the last few decades, starting with the 1990s. And would you look at that, we found two books, Vital Circuits by Stephen Vogel and Looking at the Body by David Suzuki. And it turned out mm. Dr. Suzuki is an OG science communicator with a PhD in zoology who started doing popular programming in the 1970s on Canadian television. Cool. He has 29 honorary degrees and has written 52 books. Impressive. He may either be the original source or at least know what it is. So we ordered looking at the body to look for it. And here it is. If all the body's blood vessels were laid end to end, they would stretch 96,000 kilometers, 60,000 miles. That's about two and a half times around the world. But again, no source. It turned out he's still around doing things in his late 80s, so we thought maybe if we asked Dr. Suzuki personally, maybe he actually measured it. He might know where the number's from. He had no public email, but a personal inquiry is possible by writing a letter to Dr. Suzuki. Very old school, very respectable. So, we wrote a letter. Very important letter. Dear Dr. Suzuki, I'm writing to you on a matter of grave importance. What is the original source for the 100,000 kilometers? Our internet video and our sanity depend on it. Pretty please. Respectfully yours, I hope that's what it actually checkers. said. Three weeks later, we actually got a reply. Dear weird internet people, unfortunately, Dr. Suzuki does not recall the source of this data. And since the book was written over 30 years ago, he doesn't have files that old available to look it up. Good luck with your project. You're going to need it. Kind regards, Public Information Coordinator. Okay, they didn't quite That's use awesome. these words and were actually really nice, but still, bummer. That seems Maybe the nice 1992 to me. popular science book by Stephen Vogel, a Duke University biomechanics professor, would be more helpful. It has this sentence. Combined length of pipes, 100,000 kilometers, 60,000 miles, more than twice around the Earth at the equator. So the book talks about this on one of its pipes, blood vessels being pipes. So cardiologists are just overpaid plumbers. Makes sense. 300 pages. But where is the source? Unfortunately, you could say the same thing about nuclear engineers that do thermal hydraulic calculations and accident analysis. One of my old job. I've done that job before. There's only a list of 93 references and sources with no indication where in the book they're pointing to. Our original source may be in one of the papers, books and articles in this list. Ouch! Reading all of those would take weeks. Was this really worth it? Or had we got lost in the forest of human knowledge looking for answers to questions nobody's asking and nobody cares about? Welcome to the internet. But we'd wasted so much time already, so we decided to just do that one by Some one. Fallacy. And now, for a change, <laughs> we just got stupidly lucky. For no particular reason, we decided to check the sources from last to first. And it turned out the very source we checked first was what we were looking for. A Scientific American article from 1959, oh, wow. The Microcirculation of the Blood. So we got a scan of this 65-year-old science magazine, and there it was. But this was still not the, the original source. But it did reference where it got the number from. The Anatomy and Physiology of Capillaries, a 1922 book I'm by Albus Crawl, winner of a Nobel Prize for Medicine. He probably knew what he was talking about. So we ordered his book and, bingo, we got the original source. The book is a collection of Crawl's lectures and was highly praised by experts at the time. 
It summarizes his research and adds new experiments, ideas, and hypotheses. So, so, here it was. Okay, it's got a substance. The original source, used thousands of times for over a second. Just the muscles weighing 50 kilograms. Interesting. Tree. Supposing a man's muscles to weigh 50 kilograms and his capillaries to number 2,000 per square millimeter, the total length of all these tubes put together must be something like 100,000 kilometers or two and a half times around the globe and their total surface 6,300 square meters. While other Love the must be something like gives you a sense of the uh, confidence interval that we're working with here. Scientists had speculated on the length of all the capillaries before. Crawl was the first to make a real estimate based on real experiments. Something very solid. Okay, and now that we were here, was it correct? Crawl's book includes this rather cryptic table without calculations or explanations. Huh. It seems to have been obvious to him, but not to us looking at it a century later. We needed to actually read the book. In a very breakthrough science-y kind of way, Crawl just winged it. In a nutshell, he cut muscle samples from different animals, started counting and made some rule of thumb assumptions. Today, we know that his assumptions about the density of capillaries in humans was quite off. On top of that, he used a kind of idealized bodybuilder human. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say the, fi the 50 kilogram muscles was a little different. Weighing 143 kilograms with 50 kilograms of pure muscle mass. And this finally gave him the very pleasing number of 100,000 kilometers. This reminds me of some sort of engineering calculations where you want a nice round number, the solution in this case being 100,000 kilometers, and you're asking the question, not how long are the blood vessels, but what would it take to get the blood vessels that are 100,000 kilometers? Kind of a different way of, uh, of framing that question. Because 143 kilogram mass and 50 kilogram muscle, it just seems so random and not common, especially not 100 years ago. It would be unfair to blame Crawl. This was just a small ancillary fact he probably calculated for fun and out of curiosity, oh, not elemental to his body of work. Kind of like how many nuclear weapons does it take to destroy the Earth? Way more than you would think. But he was a world expert, so his incorrect number was used in scientific papers, spread and became dogma, eventually entirely detached from the original source. One other example of this that I've heard was plutonium being the most toxic substance to man, and that was said by scientists and nuclear experts throughout the 20th century. And it does have high radiotoxicity, it's higher than uranium, but not nearly as much as other fission, as fission products such as cesium-137, or even remotely close to radium-226 or radium-228 in terms of radiotoxicity, or even non-radioactive toxicity, such as the botulinum toxin. But it was really just them emphasizing safety protocols around a relatively new substance in the, in the 1940s and 50s that people just didn't understand as well. So they were just being overly conservative, not one microscopic amount of exposure is gonna kill you. So these things do happen, sometimes with good intentions, sometimes not, but they happen. At this point in our research, over a year had passed. So, just to be sure, we did another Google search and, while we were caught up in our personal mission to find the source, up to the neck in old books, writing letters to Canada, scientists quietly published a paper, not really getting a lot of attention from anybody. Mm. They calculated a new number, a way more accurate estimate. If we had just waited another year, we could have saved doing all that work. Hmm. Maybe they're listening in on you guys. So, now, here it is. According to the newest science, the length of all the capillaries in a human is somewhere between 9,000 and 19,000 kilometers. Very impressive, but not enough to go around the world. A sort of conclusion. There's also a range on that, just different sizes and shapes of humans. If you look up the question today, you'll likely still not find the real answer, but thousands of sources, among them one Kurzgesagt video, <laughs> using the wrong number, and it will probably stay like that for a while. In all this time, why did nobody bother to double-check this? Well, because the reality is it's extremely hard and time-consuming. It's really hard 
to find stuff, depending on what it is. As we mentioned before, it took us a year and a great deal of luck to get to the bottom of this on our own. Investing this time and effort while you're writing a paper is just not feasible for most scientists or science communicators. If a number seems safe and is used by credible sources, most people, including us, end up quoting a secondary source or worse. Also, it's just such a nice round number that will stick with you once you've heard it. Facts that seem beautiful tend to survive much longer. But that's exactly the problem, isn't it? The most interesting stories survive on the internet, and often with each retelling, they get more exciting and memorable. It takes a lot of energy to get to the bottom of things, and a factoid is easily repeated, so misinformation can persist. When we started this research, we didn't think we'd end up here. For you. you, dear viewer, got a little peek into the kinds of mazes we have to navigate just to tell you our short, sciencey stories. They are as true as we can possibly make them. We'll run into the same traps as everybody else from time to time, but we're doing our best to correct. Plus, you just the idea of saying something as simplified as they do compared to some of the, you have to leave a few things out to keep the simplicity. Act misinformation, give more context, and to bring you the latest science on any topic we cover. See you next time. I actually wasn't that familiar with this factoid, but it was good to see them go down this rabbit hole and just to see the whole journey. Thanks so much for the recommendation, and thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.